Hello everyone, I'm Matej Nikšić from Slovenia and together with my colleague Nimin Dong from China we, tra we chaired the track one, which was about urban metabolism. The track was organized in two sessions. Session one addressed the spatial and functional reorganization of the city that is needed for a more sustainable exchange of goods and energy, while session two addressed the issues of the new governance and management models that are needed to support this change. We received 43 abstracts in total, out of which 12 authors presented their contributions within the online sessions. The presenters came from all around the globe. Let me name the countries from the USA, Egypt, Nigeria, Spain, Belgium, Germany, Russia, Qatar, India and China. What are the main takeaways from our track? More research is needed for the better understanding of the urban metabolism itself and how it relates to population, resource availability and environmental carrying capacity. Based on this understanding, the urban sustainability policies and governance models must be challenged. And this must not exclude opening some difficult questions too, such as questioning the existing mainstream economic models, that clearly are not the proper basis for the truly sustainable future. At the very end, I would like to thank on the behalf of the track chairs to all the presenters that contributed, and we are already looking forward to our future encounters. Goodbye. Welcome to track two, ensuring the economic diversity and resilience. My name is Lauren Gonzalez. I'm with the United States. I, along with Dr. Hanna Obruck, Podanska from Poland will be facilitating and leading the discussions of this track. We will explore the framework plans and strategies that guide, lo guide local economic investments in response to global economic trends. The number of topics covered are circulatory economy, regeneration approach and spatial factors, green economy, tourism versus environmental justice, financial policies and strategies, structural flexibility, database process and data driven decisions. We have two sessions to our track. The first session focuses on urban policies and models enhancing economic circulatory. Session two will focus on territorial oriented evaluation and definition of transformation needs. We have a great variety of case studies and research papers that cover a number of countries, as you, you can see in the slide. And Hannah will now address the presentation discussions and key takeaways from our track. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hanna Andrea Together with Lorraine Gonzalez, we've been charming track two, which brought diverse topics as a base for an interactive and engaging discussion. Our speakers presenting the challenges and possibilities of the implementation of circular economy. By reviewing different cases of smart sustainable models, they formulated recommendations of practical nature to guide urban economy and introduce planning solutions applicable in the post-oil urbanism. As the cities today need economic diversity to diminish development disproportions, our speakers emphasized the role of sharing and green economy, but also a regenerative approach to enhance the implementation of ecotown concepts in shaping compact urban structures. The discussion has proven the need of knowledge-based models for the smart policies implementation. Our cities call for data-driven planning responding to urban dynamics. More importantly, in terms of climate changes and evolving urban processes, there is an urgent need for real-time monitoring, which can ensure urban resilience and economic diversity. Hello, my name is Serin Jambazu from Romania, and together with Professor Alexander Antonov from Russia, we chaired Track 3 Planning for Urban Connectivity. The track included two sessions and one special session, and we redefined urban connectivity from network planning to local design, and we discussed about new tools to tackle urban mobility in a smarter, greener, and more efficient way. Changes in travel behavior patterns caused by COVID-19 crisis in different countries were also considered, and in our special session East-West Mobility Urban Dialogue, we focused especially on cities' response to COVID-19 and to the current urban mobility revolution. Solutions such as autonomous vehicles, intermodal public transit, also transport-oriented development or um, human-oriented land use policies 
and models such as 15 minute city uh, concept were also harshly debated under geographical context of the participants. 24 papers were presented. Authors from nine countries represent four continents, Asia, Europe, North America and Africa. The main lesson learned from the sessions. Everything will change about mobility. Achieving a sustainable transport is not a myth and the following 5-10 years will be crucial in terms of our choices as planners, authority representatives and citizens. We have now a variety of new tools and developing technologies like personal mobility vehicles, uh, autonomous vehicles or intermodal public transit systems and so forth. The need is for integrated approach, the best mix of tools relevant for the uniqueness of every city. We would like to discuss more in order to plan better connected cities, to plan new networks, facilities relevant to rapidly changing transportation technologies. My name is Pedro Garcia and I'm the co-moderator with Elizabeth Reynolds of the ISOCARP Congress 2020. In track four, we had discussions around urban resilience, which felt especially critical this year, as the ongoing threat of climate change is compounded by COVID-19. Planners have an important role to play in lifting communities out of these and other risks. We had speakers from many different countries approaching a variety of issues. With that, we were able to note several approaches. Researchers can have a key role and can trigger the combination of knowledge from many different people that will allow effective responses to climate challenges. It is most important to promote the use of sustainable and cost-efficient materials. Cities need not only to be engines of growth, but also supportive of human and environmental health, and this can be improved through people-centric placemaking. By learning from historical events, landscapes and data, and sharing experiences with global neighbors, it becomes easier to anticipate and mitigate risks. So, with hard work and international cooperation, we look forward to a safe and more sustainable 2021 and beyond. Hello everyone, I am Laura Verdelli and I co-chaired together with Eric Ubrecht and Stefan Nesch, the track number five, focusing on heritage and smart culture. We started from the observation that culture and heritage are still too often under-evaluated in urban redevelopment processes, and that in an evolutive and changing society, theories, trends, fashion, political wills, as well as perception and representation can have an influence on the acceptance of a legacy as part of our common history. Track 5 was a very exciting moment during the World Planning Congress. What lessons from researchers and professionals can be taken from the field of heritage to make cities more inclusive, resilient and sustainable? The shared culture is the smartest way to rethink city for the post-oil era. Out of the 32 accepted abstract, unfortunately only 16 were able to show up and we organized two sessions on smart research on urban heritage and on smart urban heritage projects. We deliberately chose to confront very contrasted examples from very different cultural and geographical contexts and thinking on a post-oil society, we wondered what if heritage was already sustainable. From the different representation, we learned that heritage do not only need conservation and restoration, but also to be considered as a resource and an asset for the future, it needs to be conveniently enhanced through imageability, visibility and readability, and that its place in our imaginary as well collective as individual is to be built through action and participation. Thank you. The way we plan and build our cities affect our health and well-being. Healthy and inclusive urban environment was the topic 
of track six. 2020 is a crucial decade for planning to enable the intertwined health of people and planet. COVID, as we know, acted as, and is still acting, as a stress test on our urban systems, urban places and communities. So we need bold change, and this is an opportunity to aim for a healthier and more equitable future. And this theme resonated with planners. Our parallel sessions featured more than 40 case study and paper presentations, representing all continents, 15 plus countries, and more than 25 cities and regions. They discussed urban morphology and health impact, urban nature and health resilience, sidewalks as protagonists, schools as key actors for healthy neighborhoods. But speakers also looked through the lens of the very young, the slum dwellers, the elderly and transgender, and presented innovative tools as board games and storytelling to engage the underrepresented. And there's also new confidence, evidence and new emerging needs and how spatial open data can support healthy city responses. How can health be an input and an outcome to urban planning? And what does that mean for our neighborhoods and regions? Our Urban Health Forum addressed these questions and offered a training on integrating health in urban and territorial planning. And this happened in cooperation with the Community of Practice on Urban Health, ISOCARP, UN Habitat and WHO. Track 6 also offered a special session on COVID with the UN Habitat Global Report on cities and pandemics and a thought-provoking passionate debate with international experts and women leaders. The more than two hour live stream session is still available on YouTube for you. So some of the key messages that came out. Density was not a deciding factor in increased infections. And there's often confusion between density and overcrowding. But what we need to do is to plan for well-designed de well urban density and support infrastructure. Harnessing the power of technology and data is critical for an inclusive and resilient recovery. Anuela Ristani, the deputy mayor of Tirana, points out that cities have been designed for the active male. So now we need to take different profiles and needs into account, which will make cities more democratic but more and more resilient to crisis. For Gertrude Chirambo, the president of the Malawi Network of Women Leaders, it's key to provide access to basic services for all in all settlements, rural and urban, and take a holistic approach. And for Stefan Gueri, Italian architect and all well known to you, COVID is linked to climate change and he gave nine ideas for the future, from establishing planetary green corridors to reclaiming public space to the fifth facade and making interior space more fluid. And what are some of the lessons from our parallel sessions? Every city is different than others. So their requirement, their basic necessities, their aspiration are also different. We need to read the point of basics of healthy and inclusive urbanism in the reach of every inhabitant of city. As a result of a post-COVID urbanism, urban spaces are more particularly cities, neighborhood and health infrastructure need major reform. There are innovative ways of regenerating and adopting reuse of natural resources in our cities to meet the present need. And it should be redesigned according to a requirement of today. But its basic essence and beauty should not be compromised. Integration of health, ecology, sustainable environment are utmost important consideration to include in the policy of urban reform. Urban resiliency and disaster response need serious consideration in future planning of cities. Urban neighborhoods which have positive provision for elderly, senior citizens, differently able people, children are very important aspect of healthy cities. In the context of present age of technology and data, there are immense possibility of using data and technology for future urbanism and our cities to be healthy and safe. There is a strong need of engagement of policy makers, global institutions and experts with citizens to reach innovative and inclusive urbanism. Thank you all. Namaste. Dear ISOCARP members, I am Pedro Ortiz. Uh, I have been sharing together with uh, Olga Chipinslianska uh, session seven about livable cities. We had three sessions about uh, 
how to manage those livable places, livable cities. Uh, the, uh, the first one was about the inclusiveness, the necessary, the required inclusiveness of those places. The second one was about the tools and practices. And the third one has been a forum uh, that was about uh, the, the way forward, the past and present of those livable places with a relevant approach to scales and to metropolitan uh, management and, and planning, which is a new history of uh, town planning and uh, management of livable places. Uh, the uh, contributions have been absolutely excellent. Uh, mainly, um, we had a large uh, contingent from, from China, but we had people as well from Qatar, Bahrain, and, uh, and New Zealand, uh, and uh, from India. Um, there was time for discussion, so we were able not uh, just to listen to the presenters, but we were able to, to discuss and to present new forms of, uh, of integration and production of those livable cities. And I must say that the, uh, the, the, the main takeaways of uh, those discussions have been that um, we have to uh, find new ways of understanding livable cities, uh, new, new parameters uh, that will be able to track down and then to manage and to implement uh, that, that livable capacity. And we are dealing, obviously, not only about the quality of those livable places, but as well as the, the, uh, the connotative symbolism, uh, the uh, empathy of those places with the, uh, the user, the owner, uh, which is the general population, obviously, and uh, the general population has to participate in the building of those places to represent their own system of values, uh, the inclusiveness of those uh, places, and uh, the efficiency and sustainability. We cannot only look for the social elements, we have to look as well for the economic and the environmental elements of that reliability. And the new scales, we are building up a new dimension, a new scale, and a new governance way of dealing with our urban spaces, which belong to all of us, and not just uh, to those that produce them. So uh, those have been uh, the results, and I think they are extremely uh, thriving and uh, interesting. And even if this uh, uh, Congress, uh, this, this virtual Congress has been a great success, and we must uh, congratulate ISOCAR for this new way of, of building this network of all of us, we look forward to see each other present in the Congress of 2021 and uh, to meet uh, again physically and to, to continue these discussions for the best of the future. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Francois Vienne. I'm an urban planner based in Singapore. And I've had the pleasure to chair the special track session Future of Hot Cities along with my colleague Nassim Iran Manesh from Iran. We'll moderate a special track which has been titled The Future of Hot Cities, dealing with grounded issues regarding planning methods of urban solution in arid regions of the world from Southeast Asia, India, Iran to Egypt. During the special track session, we had first a chance to listen the key outcomes from UN Habitat, who delivered lessons learned from Future of Saudi Cities program with a strong focus on action-oriented and evidence-based conclusion to diagnose the strengths and weaknesses of the planning system and local planning practice in each city. This session has helped introducing some of the main challenges in our cities, the relation between urban development and energy, the urban development in the context of water scarcity and the role of public spaces in hot cities. Indeed, across multiple geographies, experts from Southeast Asia to North Africa have helped to give analytical tools to better understand key approaches to tackle arid climate situations, either from a public policy perspective and guidelines to drive decision making at multiple scales in order to synergize efforts among stakeholders, either dealing with architectural and urban morphologies and integrate natural assets in the city shape and climate sensitive strategies, either using water as a key resource to leverage on and integrate into the city making 
rather than a potential threat and problem to solve and to manage. In that regards, we can mention Wadi design in Egypt or the importance of public spaces in the context of India. With this handful of expertise thinking pieces, the session enabled to identify key issues related to arid climate in hot cities. And we hope both audience from professional to academics, students and public sectors could take away some of the best practices and lesson learned from our guest panel. And we hope to conduct other set of ISOCAP roundtable with you in the near future. Our warmest regards.